The increasing decreasing test tells us how the sign of a function's derivative informs us about the function's shape. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson where we prove this test. Today we're going to go through a couple examples of using it. We're going to find where this function, f of x equals 3x to the 4, etc., is increasing and where it is decreasing. This, of course, is going to require us to take the derivative. And then, by the increasing-decreasing test, we can determine where our function is increasing and decreasing just by observing the different signs of the derivative. To begin, we must take the derivative. So, let's find f prime of x. That's straightforward. We just have to apply the power rule. That's going to be 12x cubed minus 12x squared minus 24x. Now, we are interested in the different intervals on which the derivative is positive and negative. And to investigate that, we're going to want to find where the derivative crosses zero. It's continuous, so in order for it to switch from positive to negative, or from negative to positive, it will of course have to pass zero. So let's see where it equals zero. To find that, we will want to factor the derivative. We are in luck because it appears every term has a factor of 12x. So let's take out 12x. Factoring out the 12x, that's going to leave behind x squared minus x minus 2. Now we can complete the factorization if we can factor this quadratic, x squared minus x minus 2. And we can factor that pretty easily. Let's see. We need two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to negative 1. So that would have to be negative 2 and positive 1. And there is our complete factorization. Thus, we know that this derivative would equal 0 when x is 0, or when x is 2, or when x is negative 1. That's just applying the zero product property. And now we can set up a sign chart where we are going to label our critical points x equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals negative 1, and then look at all 1, 2, 3, 4 of these intervals to see what the sign of the derivative is on each one. We split this up using the critical points because, again, if, for example, the derivative is positive here, it's going to have to stay positive until it passes zero, which would happen at a critical point. First, consider this interval to the left of negative 1. We could take a number from that interval, like negative 2, and plug it into the derivative. That would give us a negative multiplied by a negative multiplied by a negative. And so this would be negative. Three negatives make a negative. Now let's look between negative 1 and 0. We could take a number like negative 1 half and plug it into the derivative for that. This would be negative, this would be negative, and this would be positive because the negative number we're plugging in is between 0 and negative 1. So that guy would be positive, which means we have two negatives which cancel out and make a positive. Then between 0 and 2, we could take a number like 1 and plug it into the derivative. This would be positive, this would be negative, and this would be positive. So a single negative and two positives, that would of course then be negative. Then we could take a number over here to the right of 2, such as 3, and we would have positive, positive, positive. So the derivative is positive over there. And that's all we need to answer this question. Where is the function increasing and where is it decreasing? Well, by taking the derivative and seeing where that's negative and positive, we can see that the function is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 1. It's increasing from negative 1 to 0. It's decreasing from 0 to 2 and then it's increasing from 2 to infinity. So let's just write that conclusion here. That's everything we just said, stated in words, with some interval notation as well. The sign chart completely informs us about the function's increasing and decreasing behavior. Here is a graph of the function from Larson's calculus, and you can see it agrees with our assessment. We have this decreasing right up to negative 1, then it starts to increase, and then it starts to decrease, and then it proceeds to increase. The sign of the derivative really tells us a lot about the function shape. You can see, for example, when we go from decreasing to increasing, the function takes on a minimum value.
whereas when the function goes from increasing to decreasing, it takes on a maximum value because it's increasing up to a point and then it starts to decrease. And we'll have more to say about this in future lessons. Here's another example for you to try on your own. Find where f of x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 36x is increasing and where it is decreasing. Again, you'll just take the derivative, find the critical points, set up a sign chart to see the changes in behavior of the sign of the derivative. And that will completely inform you about where this function is increasing and decreasing. I'm going to paste most of the solution on screen now. All right, so the derivative you should have got pretty easily, just power rule, and then you can factor out a six and factor the remaining quadratic, which makes it easy to identify the critical points as negative three and positive two. Then we get this sign chart and we have to investigate the three intervals. If we plugged something to the left of negative three in, like negative four, for example, we would have a negative and a negative. Those would multiply to a positive. If we plugged in something between negative three and two, such as zero, we'd have a positive and a negative, so it would be negative there. And if we plugged in something to the right of two, such as three, we'd have a positive and a positive, so our derivative is positive there. And then we can make our full conclusion. The function is increasing from negative infinity to negative three because the derivative is positive there. The function is decreasing from negative three to two because the derivative is negative. And the function is increasing from two to infinity because the function's derivative is positive on that interval. So just from this, you know the function has to look something like this, where this switch from increasing to decreasing happens at negative three, and this switch from decreasing to increasing happens at x equals positive two, which is pretty useful. One more example for the road. Here we have the graph of f prime. How can we use this to determine on what intervals the original function f is increasing or decreasing? Of course, from the increasing-decreasing test, we just have to assess where this derivative is positive and where it is negative. We can see that the derivative is positive from x equals 1 to x equals 5. That's where this derivative is positive, and thus that's where the original function is increasing. Where is it increasing? On the interval from 1 to 5. The derivative is increasing and decreasing on that interval, but remember, it's the sign of the derivative, whether it's positive or negative, that is important when it comes to the increasing or decreasing nature of the function. Now, where's the original function decreasing? That would be where the derivative is negative, where it's below the x-axis. That happens here between 0 and 1, and here between 5 and 6. So our function is decreasing on those intervals where the derivative is negative between 0 and 1. And we might write union with, so bring that together with, everything from 5 to 6. This is the set of values on which the function is decreasing because that's where the derivative is negative. And that's the increasing-decreasing test. We can figure out where a function is increasing and decreasing by testing the sign of its derivative. And next, we will talk about how to use this to find extreme values like minimums and maximums. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus, I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest, happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant, call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponent...